Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talali Pop and today we're going to be doing an in-person review on my first electric bicycle and my first electric mountain bike at that. Now this is a relatively affordable e-bike from a brand named Magicycle and they've actually sent me this bike for a review video so I figured I'd check it out and give e-bikes a try. And if you are interested in this bicycle after my review, I'll put the link of their website in the description below where you can go check them out. Uh, the bike is currently retailing for 1800 US dollars, but it's actually on sale right now for 1590 US dollars. And the company actually sent me a few discount codes to give out to you guys. So if you use the code TMTB100, you can get $100 off of one bike. And if you use the code TMTB250, you can get $250 off of two bikes. So that makes this bike an even better deal than it already is. And if you are interested in buying the bike, I'd really appreciate you checking out that link and using my discount code since it really helps out the channel and helps the company know that this video brought you there. Now, full disclosure, I do work at Trek Bicycle as a service technician. So I've actually built and assembled countless e-bikes from Trek, uh, including their commuter models as well as their e-mountain bikes. So I know a lot about that brand. And since I have built so many Trek bikes, I can give a good comparison between this model and bikes from one of the biggest bicycle brands in the world to help you figure out if you need to spend that extra cash to get a more expensive electric bike or if you can just stick with something more affordable like this one. Hi. <laughs> and one of the main reasons I actually wanted to review this bicycle is because I am currently considering buying a Trek electric bike, uh, specifically the Trek Alant, which is for commuting purposes. But I did want to figure out if it's worth it to spend twice or even three times the amount of this bike for that Trek model. And since I have been riding this Magicycle Cruiser around for the last couple of weeks, I am prepared to make that decision. And I'll let you know at the end of the video if I decided to cancel or keep my Trek order. And on that note, the build process for this bike was very simple and intuitive. The bike was packaged very well and didn't come with any dents or anything like that. And it also did come with all the tools you need, but even if it didn't, you just need some wrenches, Allen keys, and a screwdriver. So pretty basic tools that most people should have. The hardest part about the build is probably the brake adjustment since the disc rotor can rub against the brake pads and make a little bit of noise. But besides that, it's all pretty straightforward. The company also gave me this nice hat. So I'm gonna wear it in the rest of the video. <laughs> so let's get into it by first going over what I think are the most important features you should look for in an e-bike. So first we're gonna talk about the battery on this model. This bike uses a 52 volt, 780 watt hour battery, which is very large. And that is paired with a 750 watt motor that has 86 Newton meters of torque. This allows the bike to reach a maximum speed of 28 miles per hour, which is actually the legal limit for an electric bicycle. So that's actually really awesome to see. I love that. Now in comparison, I'm going to look at Trek's least expensive electric bicycle since I know Trek bikes very well. And that is the Trek Verve Plus 2, which is around $1,000 more than the Magicycle. The Verve uses a Bosch branded 400 watt hour battery and a 250 watt motor with 40 newton meters of torque that tops out at 20 miles per hour. All of the Verve Plus battery and motor specifications make it less fast and essentially mean it outputs less power for you, which may not be ideal, though it does depend on what you need the bike for since most people don't necessarily need a lot of power and torque for daily city riding. However, I personally do appreciate those higher numbers on the Magicycle for going faster and having an easier time going uphill. And while I'm on this table here, I'll also mention that the total weight limit for the Magicycle is 350 pounds, which is 50 pounds more than on the Trek Verve, making it a little more convenient. And one important thing to mention here is that the Magicycle bike has pedal assist and a throttle which means you can physically pedal the bike in order for the motor to kick in and give you support, or you can engage the throttle with your right hand to move the bike with absolutely no effort at all. And speaking of pedal assist, let's talk about the different modes the Magicycle bike has, which basically describe how much electric power the bike will give you while pedaling. So the bike actually has seven different modes, which give you a different level of pedal assist, and you scroll through these modes by clicking the plus and minus signs on the left controller here. So mode zero is no pedal assist, and you're just pedaling this bike like a normal bike. And then mode one is giving you some pedal assist, but it will top out at a lower speed. And then it continues incrementally until you reach the highest mode seven, which gives you the maximum pedal assist, allowing you to reach 28 miles per hour. And while we're here on this screen, I do want to mention how much I appreciate this nice LED screen. 
It is very intuitive and has multiple colors, which is really cool. And you turn it on and off by holding the top power button. And then you can cycle through different information by pressing the I button on the controller to show you your odometer, trip info, mileage, and more. Another very cool feature is that you can hold down the plus and minus symbols here to go into your settings, which allows you to do much more like restrict your bike speed to 28, 20, or even 15 miles per hour if you do not want to go that fast. But besides the screen and battery, there are a lot of cool components on this bike you should know about, so let's cover those now. So this bike only comes in one frame size, which is 18 inches, which is essentially a medium size. So if you are shorter than 5 foot 3 inches or taller than 6 4, it will feel a little less comfortable. However, the bike also does come in this step through version to make it easier for you to get on and off of it. The Magicycle comes with 26 inch diameter wheels and it is a fat tire bike, which means it has really wide 4 inch wide tires, which do give a lot of stability on the road and on the trail. This also means that the bike should do very well in snow and sandy conditions. For the drivetrain, the bike comes with an entry level 1x7 drivetrain with 7 total speeds, and a Shimano Altus derailleur, which is not bad since it is a step above the lowest end derailleur that Shimano makes. The shifter on this bike is interesting as well and it works just fine, but I say it's interesting because you actually push this plus sign to shift to a harder gear to go faster, while you pull on this top lever to go to an easier gear. It also has these metal pedals which feel very durable for this large bike, and a comfortable seat. A nice addition is also this chainstay protector with the brand's logo on it here, so it prevents some added chain noise and damage. And I actually weighed the bike on my scale at home at around 77 pounds, which is about 25 pounds more than the Trek Verve Plus 2. However, it's not that noticeable while riding. Even when you don't have pedal assist on, this bike is not too bad to pedal around. The Magicycle also does have a suspension fork for added comfort, and this fork also has a lockout on it, which allows you to make the fork fully rigid so it doesn't move up or down, and doing that makes the bike more efficient in flatter areas since you don't lose any energy and thus speed to the suspension fork. And then for the brakes on this model, I actually really really like the brake levers since they have this rubberized material that grips your hand well, and they just feel very durable and safe. The brakes themselves, in my opinion, could be better, but they are Tektro branded mechanical disc brakes, which are not the worst out there, but I do notice their stopping power isn't as good as it could be. However, for most everyday purposes, these will work just fine. It also, of course, has a bunch of commuter focused features like a rear rack for carrying around 50 pounds of cargo, which also includes this nice elastic strap to secure everything. And I actually use this while recording to carry my tripod. It also has a nice bell in the front that rings twice every time you hit it, which is cool. And of course, there is a rear kickstand as well. It also has front and rear lights that are fairly bright as daytime running lights, but definitely work well at night, as you can see in some of these videos I took here. And this is an important safety feature for riding so you can see at night, but also so cars can see you. On top of those lights, the tires on this bike also have a reflective sidewall so cars can easily see the bike. And for those front and rear lights, you just turn them on or off by holding the plus sign on the left controller. The bike also has front and rear plastic fenders that cover these large tires to prevent any mud or rocks from hitting you and the bike. But that's not all. Magicycle also sends you a free gift, I believe, when you purchase their bike, and you can choose among any of these accessories here. So a Magicycle branded hat, which isn't bad. A Magicycle toolkit with everything you need to work on this bike, which I really like. A cable bike lock for securing your bike if you plan on parking it anywhere outside. Or even a bike alarm that is motion sensitive when activated. And I've never seen this before, but it is a nice idea. In my opinion though, the best option for a free accessory is the top tube bag which has a phone holder area that also works with touchscreen devices so you can easily access anything you need on your phone without having to take it out of your pocket. And then there's also more storage below that so it's a handy accessory to have. Okay, so now that we've covered these specs, I want to take the bike out and ride it for a little bit on some roads and some light trails to showcase its speed and comfort. It gets pretty windy when you go faster on this bike, so I'm just going to narrate over this audio a bit. So I started off riding on some sidewalks and grass areas, and it did perfectly fine. 
and then I decided to take it on a nice paved bike path to see how it handled around fast corners and just on the smooth road with these mountain tires and it was very comfortable, fast, and I really had no trouble at all. This is just so fast. And of course going uphill was a breeze as well. The bike would use some more power going up and thus lose battery life quicker, but I really did not have to put any effort into going up. I also rode it on a light gravel path and that was actually very fun since the bike bumped around enough for me to feel like I was going off-road, but not enough for me to be uncomfortable. So I also took it off the path and messed around a bit and it was a really good time overall. There you go. Overall, in my opinion, the components on the Magic Cycle are objectively more entry level, but I don't really notice that as much on this bike compared to non-electric bikes since e-bikes rely heavily on the battery and motor, which seem to be pretty good quality so far. Additionally, you have to consider that this bike is very reasonably priced compared to other e-bikes on the market, so considering all of that, I really don't have any complaints on this model. And that brings me to my final decision. So already by comparing the Trek Verve with this model, I'm sure you can tell I prefer the Magicycle, but the Trek bike I was looking into buying was actually the Trek Allant Plus 7S, which also goes 28 miles per hour. I do love the Trek Allant and still believe it's a really high quality bike. However, this Magicycle, in my opinion, fills all of my needs for an e-bike currently, so I have indeed canceled my Trek order. However, these thoughts are also all based on the normal environment for this bike, which I believe would be rough roads and light trails or gravel paths. The bike excels in these scenarios, but in my next video on this bike, I'll test it out on some harder mountain bike trails and see how it does, so look forward to that since it should be really fun. But that's it everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember to check out Magicycle using my link in the description below. I appreciate all of your support very much, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day today, and remember to keep biking.